Hey, I think I might actually be early by two minutes. That's because I'm so nervous and excited. How is everyone doing? Susie Bones in the house. Working from the Devon UK, as you all know by now. If you're hopping on, I know actually if you're going to be watching this replay, hashtag replay, please do let us know where you're tuning in from. As you know, my audience, well, is reaching worldwide now. And I love, love, love to see where you're all hopping on from. It's really exciting. And look at that, Mr. Berries in the house. He's ready and waiting. So excited for this. Um, obviously, did you catch my live earlier? Because I did do a big introduction for uh, Rob. So I hope you guys are all familiar now with who he is. An absolute network marketing genius. So he's going to be sharing his top tips. Hey Jade, thank you so much guys for tuning in. This is awesome. Let's get this. Let's get it. We want 100 views tonight. Can we do that? Do you reckon we can? I hope so. Hey, Linda, thank you so much for coming on as well. So, um, any questions, feel free to comment as we're chatting. And I'm just going to get straight into it. I'm just too excited, so I'm so sorry. Everyone, just comment, join us. Let's have a look. Let's see where he is. Uh, Rob, it's saying inviting. It's saying it's some fight. If this doesn't work, I'm going to be gutted. Ah, where's he gone? Did you get that? It says it sent the invite, Rob. Has he gone again? I sent you the invite. Did you get it? Guest request, loud views to join, add. Okay, we'll try that. And it's adding now. I sent it a different way. Oh, God, please. Facebook keeps doing this to me. It's it's the seconds, right? Seconds feel like minutes and long time because, right? It's just stressful. You don't know if the technology is going to work or not. My heart. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. Hey, how are you doing? I'm just excited to be part of the Susie Boom. Hey, hey, all the way in the USA, Utah. I know this is awesome. We haven't seen you. When did you come to Birmingham to do your event, actually? When was that? When did we... Oh, meet? soon here. Hold on one sec. Let me turn the volume up so I can hear you. There you go. <laughs> there we go. So, I... He's frozen. There we go. I'm trying to figure out when I will be back there for doing my own event, but I will be back there, hopefully. I'm planning on being there at the end of November, I know uh, Fraser Brooks is doing an event, so he asked me if I'd speak at that. So I'll be out there for that event and excited oh, to be there. And cool. uh, yeah, when so we'll you, see what when, else. When did you? When were? When did we meet? Was it June? I'm trying to think. I can't remember when it was. We met was in. May? We met in May, middle of May. Uh, middle to the end of May. It was good, and also David J. Ross. He was there too, wasn't he? He did a really good job. Yes, he, the legend himself was there. So we I know. We had fun and it was fun meeting you as well. And it's always fun uh, having in-depth conversations because you know your stuff. <laughs> right, so obviously we've got people coming on, which is awesome. Um, as you know, I'm in the UK and everyone, I, and I'm in Devon, okay? Right, all the other girls are in like Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham. We're like, in the, do you know where Devon is? We're in the southern part. Oh my God! I, I know. It's no beautiful. one's ever shared or talked to me. I don't, I mean, you're the first person making me aware, so I appreciate it. Devon cream teas. Have you heard of that? The scones and the little jam, the little pot of clotted cream. Scones and, of course. There you go. That's what we're famous for down in Devon. Well... Now I know. Now I'm aware. No one's <laughs> made me aware. I've only been to Birmingham and I've been to London several times, but that's about it. So yeah, you need to come. You need to come down south. You need to come down to like Torquay, it's like the English Riviera, which is like Monte Carlo. You've been to Monte Carlo, south of France. Beautiful. I have been. All the boats yep. are fabulous. Anyway, so you know where I am. So obviously, here's me. Okay, just pitch this. Talking about network marketing okay and everyone's like what 
what what are you talking about it's a scam what what susan i don't understand i'm like that oh my god so i've been listening to your training because obviously there's this super super training that you know you can listen into and you guys are fabulous because it's like it's free content isn't it on all your pages um and i wanted to actually thank goodness is put some credibility into this industry and i wanted you to tell your story a little bit how actually you got involved with it because you were a really successful tennis coach weren't you really big time over there but i hand it over to you because okay i know your story but i want you to you know let everyone else know it's brilliant well i appreciate that and i look at it and i think it's just a lot of people it's either they were approached about it wrong or improperly yeah and they don't they haven't really done their due diligence and i don't get mad or don't get defensive because i was there at one point i was there where that's exactly what i thought yeah so rather than getting defensive or getting mad or anything or argumentative i like to ask a lot of questions because for me yeah my story is i played semi-professional tennis i ended up playing um collegiate tennis before that so i played for my school university and then i transitioned into teaching tennis and then i ran a tennis club and it was good money. I made six figures a year. It's all relative to what good money is. To me, that was great money. I was 24 years old. I did that to the age of 28, which is which to me I thought was a lot. But you know, each person's different. But the problem was, is I looked at my life, um, and I looked at how how was I going to feel 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now? And my knees were getting tired. I constantly would lose my voice. And so all I was doing was just trying to figure out, okay, what do I want to really be when I grow up? And <laughs> what I wanted more than anything else was time freedom. And I think that's what everybody wants. Yeah. Everybody wants time freedom, whether that's time with kids or grandkids or with a loved one or to do humanitarian trips or to travel the world. We all want time freedom. So that's exactly what I wanted. So for me, I, and again, I'm not ripping on jobs because Really, it's it's about 80% of people don't like their jobs. But if you love your job, then that's great. Just, yeah. I'm not ripping on it. I'm just talking about for me, I liked my job, but I didn't love it. It didn't, it didn't, it wasn't giving me what I wanted. And I looked at the world and I said, hey, if someone else can create time freedom, financial freedom, so they can go be that that husband and that father, which for me was my goal. I want to be able to do family trips more often. At that time, I think I only had, when I first started, five vacations a year, and every year they gave us one more. So I looked at that, and I thought, that's, that's just not enough. And so for me, what I did is I transitioned from running the tennis club to asking every single entrepreneur, what did you, how did you make your money? And one person specifically was, happened to be in network marketing, he happened to make over $20 million in network marketing. And that just blew my mind, because I thought, yeah. nobody actually really makes money. And he said yeah. to me, Network marketing done right is your greatest dream. Done wrong is your greatest nightmare. And I thought, well, what do you mean? He said, well, yeah. done right. Think about it. He said, you got time freedom. You get financial freedom. He said, you got a product that you absolutely love. You have people that you love that are a part of it. You're on a positive, uplifting culture. And he said, and you have customers that are satisfied. He said, so done right. It's your greatest dream. He said, done wrong. You've got products that are overpriced, overhyped. You've got people that are, you know, pitching their friends and family the wrong way and they're not creating friendships or actually making enemies where everyone wants to stay away from. But he said, you know what? I know how to do this. I'm going to teach you the right way to do it. Wow. And so that's how I got involved. And this year now, uh, next month will be my seventh family vacation of the year, which to me, that's what I'm most proud of that is, is really that those is family vacations. Phenomenal. And one question for me, you know, when you were doing your job and obviously you were awesome at that job, you're truly successful because it's like you're saying, so it's six figures a year. I mean, that's phenomenal. There's going to be English people on here with their mind totally blown. You were only 24, 24. Is that correct? I mean, that's, that's correct. Bloody insane. Sorry. <laughs> it's just absolutely insane. But so when you were going to work, because I've done this when I was in a job, right? Did you ever go to work and you sat and going, what am I doing? There must be something more to life than doing this. Is this what I've got to do for the next 30 years? Did you, was that the, 
Is that, that's what yeah, I think, I mean, the definition, the definition of happiness could be a lot of different things, but I think the best definition that I've heard is progress. And so the problem was, is the job that I was at, they pretty much made it where I couldn't make more money. Now, of course, Good. I can still progress, right. but money was almost in a sense, a representation of that progress, but it, it, they took away a lot of the incentive. So then you get in cruise control. So then your brain stops thinking of creative ways to be able to make more money and to improve. And when you're not progressing, then all of a sudden what happens is, is you just start thinking, oh. okay, what, you know, like you just don't feel great. And so for it's me, so. yeah. And that's what was hard for me personally. Everyone's different. Maybe yeah. you have a job yeah. where you feel satisfied. You feel constantly challenged from a, from a standpoint mentally, from a standpoint of being a person, from a standpoint of being a leader, from a standpoint of creating more compensation, whatever yeah. it is. But for me, I just felt like I wasn't being challenged enough. And yeah. that's where network marketing came into play, where I think it's the most moral form of compensation because, you know, in network marketing, it doesn't judge you based on your race, your gender, your educational background. Yeah. It's you're going to get paid on based on what you do. So it's the most moral form of compensation that I know of because in a job, you train someone to be as good as you or better than you. Many times they get a promotion over you. Yeah. In network marketing, the great part is people say, well, oh, well, it's a pyramid because the person above you is always going to make more than you. Well, that's actually a myth. I always made more than the person that was directly above me. And so yeah. you can always make more, but I want them to make some of money based on what I'm doing because now they're incentivized to help me. Whereas in the workforce, like I said, they're not always incentivized to help, to help. you because there's this culture of politics are not, uh, not always the case, just most of the time yeah. the case. And so for me, yeah, it's, I love it because I get paid based on the value that I create in the marketplace. Yes, Chris. And so did you have a supportive upline? See, I don't, you probably haven't watched my lives. I can be a bit controversial. And this is only from my personal experience because I'm fairly new to this. You know, I'm, you know, if I found this 20 years ago, I would have saved myself thousands because i've set my own business used your own money yeah my own money to invest in a conventional business so you've got overhead staff wages blah 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 then i was introduced to this and i was just like is that it it what is that all it got and you have your marketing back office websites products shipped over to you delivered the la la it's phenomenal um but somehow in people's minds, they can't get their head around it, can they? They actually cannot grasp what a fabulous, fantastic, cost-effective opportunity from home you have. I mean, can you highlight? Can you help me out with this, please? <laughs> because yeah, for I'm sure. I mean, is, you know, the best way to look at it is: is in a job, you're trading time for money, and there isn't leverage, right? Whereas when you look at it, you've got to look at it from a network marketing standpoint of creating leverage. So let's say that, you know, I find a hundred customers that keep reordering from me. Yeah. Well, that means every single month I'm going to get paid off of those customers, which I mean, a normal business, that's how it is. You get paid off of repeat Profit. customers. That's the best yeah, yeah, business yeah. you can be in. It's the okay. repeat customer business. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to create that repeat customer because then you create this reoccurring or residual income, which means you can actually make money while you're sleeping. And people roll their eyes and <laughs> yes. say, oh, really? Well, I mean, isn't that what successful people do? I mean, when you look at Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon, if he stopped working right now, wouldn't he make continually money, you know, great money? Steve what? Jobs, rest in peace, he passed away. But at some point, right, you could just say, okay, great. I've created a product people keep reordering. You could go on and on and on. So yeah. now it's just a micro version of that because most businesses cost, small businesses cost 10 plus thousand dollars. Franchises, I mean, you can spend a couple hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And so you look at it, uh, it's got the system, but your goal is to really create that residual income. Then you look at 
they've got to create their own brand, their own name. Then they're looking at trademarks. Then they're looking at accounting. Then they're looking at back office oh. systems. Then they're looking at how do I ship out? Then they're looking at how do I pay them? And in network marketing, you don't have to worry about that. All you're doing is creating that transaction, that value where someone says, okay, I see the value or I want to purchase yeah. your product or your service. So yeah. that's the, that's the strength. The weakness is, is because it takes away a lot of that headache. People commit to what they create. So the weakness is, is if they have a bad day, bad week, bad month, a lot of times easy in, easy out and they quit yeah. and they say, well, I don't get it. I didn't make any money. It didn't work for me. Whereas in real business, they don't, they don't typically make a profit for three years. But the thing about this, in network marketing, if after six months somebody makes $300, they say, Susie, what's wrong with me? This isn't working. Whereas in traditional business, you put so much sweat equity into it that after a year, if you turn a profit, you think it's a success. So it's us mismanaging expectations and hype and teaching people that they're going to make money overnight. Whereas I treat this like a real business and teach people and set the right expectations of sure it can happen quicker it's happened. But if you treat this like a real business, you can make a real business income rather than like a get rich quick scheme program. Like, unfortunately there are people in our industry that, that still, and will always do that. Yeah. That's human nature. Yeah. But I think it's important that we teach them the right way and give them the right perspective. Right, another question. I'm so happy you said that because I've always, and people know, been, well, we're saying banging on about you need to have ethics. I think you need to have honesty. You need to have integrity. You need to look after <clears throat> the people who join you. I think it's building, you know, you mentioned culture. And I'll say, oh, my God, they're going to be like, oh, my God, it's a cult. No, it's not a cult. I mean a cult, a team culture, which is based on, this is what I believe. Um, I'm not one of these people where, you know, like you were just actually hitting the nail on the head, which I think I spoke about last night with uh, the fear fighter, where you get these people, they just bring them in, bring them in, sign everyone up. It's like ching, 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 ching. And then when people go, oh, excuse me, can you help me? And they go, no, sorry, too busy. Now, to me, I'm not happy with that. From my heart, I don't feel comfortable with that. And I feel that to retain this is a key this is what i've learned to retain your team members where they're not willy-nilly just going leaving leaving you is you're proper looking after them you you are giving them your attention so if they need help you're there or you'll show them something a tool within the business actually go and watch this video that will answer that question but it's not a question of i've had so many horror stories rob honestly Honestly, it's actually made me go, what the hell have I got involved with? And then I've got a mindset in my mindset and thought, do you know what? Hang on a minute. Those guys can do what they want to do. It's more about what I'm going to do and the culture that I want to create for my future team. And I want to get it right. And I'm not the person to go, everyone's coming. Oh, yeah, can I join you? I'm like, hang on a minute. Do you fit in? Do you have the same beliefs as me? Because if you don't, I'm sorry, because you don't want no. I'm very much usually into Grant Cardone, as you might not know, or you might. No negativity. It's all positivity. You have this massive. I have got this massive vision. I can so see with my values how I can help a lot of people and inspire people. And this is really right. Why I decided. No one's told me. Little old me. 30 day Facebook live challenge, okay? And I reached out to all you guys on the Jack Jones, yeah? Sent messages because I'm thinking big. I'm thinking what I'm going to do, I'm going to get all you guys here to confirm if you do it correctly, like you said, if you build it correctly, that opportunity, you don't need qualifications. You need common sense and you need a heart. Am I right or am I wrong? No, 100%. I mean, that's the best part about going to any events. You see people from all different walks of life, and it's empowering. You see people different backgrounds. You see people different ages. Yes. You see male, female. And there is no one size fits all. Well, we're looking for this specific type person. And so that's what we're doing is we're looking 
and we're understanding that it's it's each person has a different background yeah. as they go and each person creates a different culture and what's great is you create that culture the people that don't fit naturally sift themselves out because yeah. they don't like, fit and if they don't fit yeah. they feel uncomfortable and they're not going to follow whatever system or whatever culture that's created but like you said culture isn't cold in a negative way culture is just creating culture. really the main principles and philosophies just like think of apple for example apple's yeah. created a culture um starbucks has created a culture coca-cola has created a culture the best companies create a culture which creates a community and that's what you want to do is you want to create a community fill um, so I think it's absolutely important. I think the best part about it is for me is I laughed when my mentor told me, he's like, it's not about the money. It's about the person you become. And I'm thinking in my mind, well, you make millions of dollars. Of course you're telling me that. Pay me millions of dollars. And then I'll say that. But the more I was involved in network marketing, I realized I became a better father, a better husband, a better friend, a neighbor, a better person, just a better, yeah. just in general, overall, everything. Yeah. And that's because... Network marketing, I think, is one of the truest forms of leadership because in a job, you tell someone what to do as a boss, they need to do it or they're fired. Network marketing, it's a volunteer army. No one has to do what you tell them to do. You aren't anyone's yeah. boss. Yeah. So you have to learn to lead through influence, not through title. So at the beginning, it's hard because it's you're looking in this mirror and you see all these weaknesses just staring you down, right down the barrel, right in your eyes. And you're just like, ah, <laughs> and so for me, I, in order to make more money, I had to become just a better person, a better leader. Yeah. And money became a byproduct of becoming yeah. a better father, better husband, better friend, better leader, better person, better neighbor, better everything. And so I understood that after. For the beginning, I didn't understand that because I was just so frustrated, right? Because for me, I just wanted to put oxygen on myself to make money so I could provide for my family and start to achieve my goals and dreams, then it expanded to be a lot bigger. And another question I got for you, which I've heard a lot of people, um, which uh, again, they won't understand. Now I know, and a lot of people said to me, but when I started to do, oh, you, please don't watch my first Facebook Live, Rob, okay? <laughs> Just putting that out there. Um, how if much... you won't watch mine, then I won't watch yours. That's our deal. Okay, cool. How much I've grown, and this word, everyone keeps saying, dare I say it, personal development. And everybody's like, what do you mean by that? What? And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I tell you what, it works. I mean, I've been listening to Grant Cardone for three years, four years actually, and he's been a massive influencer in what I've done with my car business and with my decisions now, and actually I was looking for an online way, and I came across this. Well, actually, my daughter introduced me into this opportunity that I'm with now, but I, it's just opened my eyes, and I've gone, holy smokes, this is absolutely incredible, but in my, I'm like, it's got to be done right, though. You have to have, you have to have integrity and help inspire other people, and it's through personal development so now i want you to explain to all these lovely people what that means because they'll be going what's personal development yeah i think of it as the two words break them down personal and development you need to develop yourself personally and i've read now in the last 10 years over 700 books on personal development yeah well i don't consider myself naturally just the best or great I just had more discipline. I out-disciplined people. And I did that through personal yeah. development because whatever you want to learn, someone yeah. else has done it. Someone else can teach you. So I wanted to learn how to become a better public speaker because I was off -led. I wanted to learn how the uh, Sorry for, for a second. I wanted to learn the psychology of, you know, just humans in general. I wanted to learn a little bit more about motivation. I wanted to learn a little bit more about self-discipline. I wanted to learn more about credibility and likability. Whatever it is I wanted to learn, I just went and studied and I became better and better and I still constantly do it. I mean, I read this morning for an hour. So I'm still doing it on a daily basis. But you, yeah. to really have true personal development, you can't just read and learn it. You've got to go apply it. Or else you didn't implement it. Yes, you have yep. to implement it. And oh my gosh, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> 
because obviously on my 30 day live, yeah, I think this is this is day 27, I've done three, <laughs> but what I've learned from like all you different guys, I'm going to try and help other people and share it, share what I've learned with them so that I can help other people. So it's not like you say, it's not for your personal gain. It's actually, you know, it's helping others, isn't it? But at the same time, you know, like product launches, I see so much of people, you might agree, I don't know, uh, where they're, they, they've got their product. Oh my God, let's, let's say they're selling this and they're like, yeah, I've got this product. You've got to come buy it today. And their Facebook feed is full. So there's no curiosity, there's no intrigue, and they wonder why they're not getting any sales. Can you help? You got to provide value, right? Too many people just sell, 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 and it's like, what are you selling? Nobody knows. Value, value, value. Yes, 100%. And then what will happen is, if you go, actually, the benefit, because people have said to me, oh my God, you're so, why are you so energize what because you know i'm knocking on now i'm older than you okay <laughs> what what i thought we were brothers and sisters <laughs> anyway and they're like you've got so much energy what the hell's happened to you and i'm like i'm telling you this product i'm drinking it's boom i'm like that i'm full of it but and and that's what i mean you're not going oh because i'm drinking xyz you but they can see it in you. And I think that speaks volumes, it speaks volumes, doesn't it? Is that, how do you I'm, train? Do you mean, what do you, actually, if you tip, actually, we should ask these guys, are you all enjoying this, people? Because we're just chatting, aren't we? <laughs> put some love, put some likes up. If you're loving it, share it with your teams if we're giving you value. Obviously, with a lovely Rob Sperry tonight, all the way from Utah. Are you all enjoying this? Hopefully, with Anyway, we'll keep talking. They'll, they're fine. So how do you train people? You know when they first get in? Because I'm not sure. What was your first network marketing business? Oh, I can see the love hearts coming out, Rob. Yeah, I started in, in network marketing 10 years ago. And I actually, the wow. focus was on anti-aging. It was on skincare, which was so opposite for, right, for me. Yeah, so 10 years ago. Skincare, yeah, no internet, every, no social media. No one was doing social media at that time. Everyone was anti-social media. Wow. And so uh, it, was, it was probably one of the hardest ways to start, but I'm so grateful for it because I learned so much and had a lot of failures and a lot of successes. <laughs> but I got to learn a lot. I had the highs and lows. Most people go like this. I went like this. It's like high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. But the one key thing you haven't told them is you didn't you actually quit your tennis coaching job? You just went, right, that's it. I quit. It's a bit like what I've done. I quit way too soon. I suggest for, for most people <laughs> that they take, you know, way longer. But for me, I quit. I went full force after five days like a complete idiot, which in the end worked out really well because it's like throwing somebody in an ocean saying, learn how to swim. So either you're yes. going to die and drown or you're gonna to learn to become a really good swimmer. And I almost drowned a couple times, but I learned to become a great swimmer. So I'm grateful now, but I tell everybody, don't do what I did. I went way, I went full-time way too soon. So you just, so, but you were, but reason being, obviously that the chap that you met on the, you know, the tennis court, obviously he's proving to you, he's saying to you, well, I've earned, you know, X, Y, Z, and I can show you, Rob, this is what you need to do. So you made a dis no, you made a complete decision and went full throttle and thought, do you know what? Right. Yeah, obviously no one I would say you sound a bit like me actually. <laughs> you just like, right, that's it. This is what we're doing. You go flat out. And like you say, you learn the hard way because it's not all gonna be plain sailing, mate. This is gonna be down days. But then you come to a point where you go up. But it's a learning curve with anything, isn't it? Yeah. So, Sorry, that's my eight-year-old just came in, yeah, get, got home from school, well, and they're so used to videos now, they just run in and out. <laughs> that's the fun part about having a stay-at-home business. <laughs> Are they still in the room? So, no, she, she told me she's going to a friend's house because she knew I couldn't say no because I'm doing a Facebook <laughs> Live. 
And she literally shut the door and ran out and ran to a friend's house. She's turning eight next month and she's she's got a lot of fire and feistiness, which I guess these days you gotta have a strong personality to survive. So uh so I'll take the good with the bad. That is the ultimate uh blackmail. Sorry, dad can't say no because he's Facebook live with a lady in the UK. <laughs> Oh, bless them. She'll be fine. Right, what else was I going to say? I think that's it. Is there anything else? Actually, got to mention, oh, my gosh, you have an awesome event coming up. Sorry. I know you come to the UK. I'm talking. Where are you going? Is it Greece? No, probably wrong. What's the retreat? I'll be in a, a huge thing. at Fraser Brooks event in Birmingham the very end of November. No, I'm on about your event. Oh, my event has not been planned yet. We're thinking, I'm looking at um, either April or I will do the beginning of May. That's those, are the, those are the times I'm looking at. It'll probably be Birmingham, but I haven't planned it fully yet. And I'll be out there and we're going to go all out this time. Last time was just kind of a trial. It was more of just a meeting. Uh, I didn't promote it a lot. Didn't spend any money promoting it. Didn't spend a lot of time networking for it. And you were it testing was, the market. Now I was testing the market out and I really Let's loved it. it out there. So the plan is to do it again. Absolutely. Um, is there anything else we should ask? Anybody got any questions for the lovely Rob Sperry? Put it in the comments. Hey, Sam, look, we've got Canadians in the house. Let's see who's in the house. Starting to cut out. Canadians. Oh my gosh, Canadians. Oh, Seattle girls. There you go. The You're starting to cut out just a little bit, Susie. Rob. Say that again. I said you're cutting out just a little bit now. <clears throat> okay, I'm time is well. We've done thirty minutes. That's incredible. And I feel you've given awesome value. I really hope that we've helped a lot of people, don't you? I think it was fun. Hey, I hope they can all find just one thing that helps them out in their life and in their business. That's always the goal. Take one thing and go implement it in your life and in your business. And go for it. Get that self, get that burn inside you and do it. <laughs> yeah, high five. Okay, we'll talk later. Thank you so much. Say goodbye thanks. to everyone. Thanks, Susie, for having me on. Thanks all for tuning in. I appreciate it. Follow this lady. She knows what she's doing. Has great content. Appreciate it, Susie. We'll talk again soon. Uh, love you lots. Take it easy. Give the girls a kiss. <laughs> bye, bye-bye. Well, that went jolly well, didn't it, guys? I'm so impressed with myself. I thought it was actually going to be like, I was a bit shaky, to be honest with you. I was a bit, that was huge. Who's still on here with me? Can you, did you actually, right, who enjoyed that? Give me some love. I need some love. That was awesome. I'm so pumped from that. I so appreciate him taking time. You need to Facebook, if you don't know, if you don't know who Rob Sperry is, have a word with yourself, okay? Go on Facebook, put Rob Sperry, check him out. And then, then you will appreciate my gratefulness for him taking the time out to come on here for 30 minutes. I mean, he is a legend. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. That went fantastic. I so hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm so pumped and guys you are not going to believe the lineup that I have got I've actually got butterflies in my stomach right now right and I haven't had that since I was a young girl because it's so exciting man I'm just blown away right any questions <laughs> because I'm rambling oh man I so appreciate you all coming on here oh thank you so so much and guess what I'm going to be back tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. And remember, tomorrow night, hopefully, you UK people, all you UK people going, it's this, listen to what Rob Sperry just said. He's just told you his story. And it's achievable. You can do this. I can do this. Everybody can do this. And like I said, you don't have to have any special education. You Honest to God, it blows my mind. That's why I'm so excited about it. And so tomorrow evening, 
I will be at the 10 tours with Tracy M. Stewart, who is obviously one of my uh, business partners. Uh, I'm trying to get another lady from Bridgewater to come down and join us as well. And we want people to all come together and have a social drink with us so that we can actually introduce you to this fantastic, exciting new way, guys, of earning a sideline. It doesn't, if, you, if you've got a job that's perfect, but guess what? You can do this in the evenings or the few hours that you have. It's fabulous. Anyway, and you meet legends. I'm very lucky, girl. On that note, I'm going to go and celebrate. Ah! Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Love you. Thank you all so much.